Good evening and welcome to NUFC 360. I'm Michael. I'm joined tonight by Joel. You all right? And Ez. All right. How's it going? Uh, how are you doing, boys? All right? Yeah. Doing good. Yes, Thanks good. Friends. Everyone happy after uh, Sunday's results still? Circumstances, you, you've got to take it. It, it yeah. was a good point to score that late on um, without yeah. Bruno, without obviously Isaac. So, yeah, all in all, yeah. Yeah. And when I watched it yeah. back, I actually thought I started thinking we were unlucky. Actually, obviously, I remember the I forgot about Maxi nearly scoring as well as uh, Anderson hitting the crossbar. So, but uh, yeah, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the imminent departure of Martin Dubravka, uh, our new signing, Isaac, and where we need to strengthen in the window if we do. So, going back to Martin Dubravka. Joel, what's your thoughts about losing him to Manchester United? Um, it's it's perplexed as like perplexed as if I'm honest. Um, it, it's a weird transfer because he's going to be he's going there, he's sat on the bench. Um, I know some people are saying he's more likely to challenge De Gea than he would challenge Pope, but either way, I think he's sitting on the bench. Um, he's he's probably in terms of squad depth, he's going to be a miss to her. He was in pretty much the top 30% for total accumulation of saves the past five years. I was just checking that out. Um, he's obviously a lot better than what we've got and as a second-choice goalkeeper. Um, so it's an interesting one. And I think the way Man United have been spending, I would have liked to try and get more than five million if they do choose to buy him um, at the end of the loan. So, yeah, that, that's where my thoughts sort of lie. Right. And, Ez, what do you think about... Losing him and keeping Darlow as a number two, would you rather, it, obviously, maybe it was the other way around? Or are you happy to let someone who doesn't want to stay go? I mean, realistically speaking, I mean, um, uh, we'd, we'd all rather have uh, Dubrevka, but he, he definitely does not want to be a number two. Uh, you saw from what was being reported by, uh, what was being actually uh, put out there by his agents over the summer when Pope signed, uh, his agents were saying, well, doesn't matter, you know, Dubravka's one of the best goalkeepers in Europe. He'll still be number one, et cetera, et cetera. They seem really confident. And so you can kind of like put the pieces of the puzzle together, right? So from one side, Martin Dubravka is obviously very adamant that he's still number one and he gets dropped. And so you can, so from my perspective, it looks like something's happened there. Um, it's kind of put his nose out of joint. Uh, so he was never going to be our number two. He, he, he never wanted to be our number two. And so I think it's better we have Darlow as our number two and is willing than have someone who's going to kind of stink the place out a little bit because, um, mm. because he sees himself as uh, better than the guy who's, who's who's being started. Yeah, maybe it sort of like shows you know, Eddie is, you know, a hard taskmaster after all and there's no room for sentiment. I suppose you could look at it like that because he has saved Al Bacon quite a few times, hasn't he, Joel? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's, he's made some marquee saves sort of over the over the seasons we've had him. Um, but, you know, I remember his first game actually for us. I think he debuted against Man United at home. Ah, but, yeah. But, yeah, I think pretty much sort of amalgamating what Ez has just said there, uh, I think if he doesn't want to be at the club and he's not willing to be, then fair enough. But I just do wish we could have got a sort of better deal than um, what, what we're apparently going to have. Yeah, is it actually going to be a loan then? I mean, is it a loan with an option to buy? I keep hearing I it's bigger five million. Yeah, I think yeah. That's what's getting talked about? Yeah, again, that's strange, isn't it? I mean, also, I mean, for, personally for myself, I think it's strange that he wants to go to Man U when they're not what they were. Fifteen years ago, that would have made sense. I mean, he's got to depose De Gea, and he, he, you know, that's probably what he's thinking he's going to do. Like all players do, they think I'm going to be king here. I'm going to be number one. But it seems a bit strange for a team that are not where they used to be to a team like, like us who are going up, it seems mm. a strange, uh, strange uh, sort of like dilemma really, for not dilemma, but it seems a strange dichotomy for him really, that he's yeah. maybe thinking about Man United in the different lights of the rest of us. What do you think, Ez? Do you think, he's, do you think that's true or do you just think it's just clearly because he thinks he is going to break number one? Well, I mean, I've just come back from the US from my holidays and all I saw there were Liverpool and Man United shirts. The pool is still real, uh, they're yeah. a global brand. And yes, they've had a rubbish 10 years, but they're still a massive brand. Um, and so I can see the appeal. Um, Martin Dubravka has no ties to Newcastle, right? None at all. Um, yeah. He's here with his wife and his young child. 
and that's it. Got no family in Newcastle. They've got no support network. They've got no, they've got no ties. So as yeah. far as he can see, he can earn more money for his family. He's 33. He's probably going to retire. It's probably his last proper contract. Yeah. So I, I, you know, show you've got to look at it from his perspective. Yeah, absolutely. It just seems strange as well. The, the old loan thing, you know, I mean, he could end up being exactly where he is right now, you know, at the end of the season, if he comes back to us, if at all. But um, now moving on to from people going out to someone coming in, obviously you want to talk about Isaac. What do we think of uh, he's going to do for us? Is he untapped potential? I mean, there's been a lot of sniping, especially from someone who I won't mention, but it rhymes with person. Uh, about you know, oh, well, if he's so good, why weren't Barcelona interested in him? But and you know, in this and that, and but as far as I can see from his stats, his record's pretty good. He got one in three in his time in, in the Spanish league, which is not bad for a kid who's well, I call him a kid, but he's 22. Uh, so Joe, what do you think of him? Um, well, as far as I know, I, the, when I think it was Mason who came out and said that about why is, why is Real Madrid not went in for him, why is Barcelona? I mean. Three years ago, as far as I can remember, there were all the top European teams starting to, you know, notice him. Um, he's been well sought after, like, by pretty much, again, top European clubs for the past three years. Um, at Dortmund, you know, he, he was sort of going to go down that route of a young talent at Dortmund, like the likes of Bellingham and stuff like that. It didn't work out. I think he only played six games there. Um, but and still, in terms of potential, I think he, it, sky's, the sky's the limit. I mean, he's shown already... For Sociedad, I think it was his second season, I believe. He got 17 goals, one assist. That was when he played in that in the number nine role, the striker role. Um, I think the following seasons, or maybe the season after, well, the season just gone actually. He did only score. It might it was a low number of goals. Um, Six that, or something that, like that, wasn't it? Yeah. It? But as as far as I know, I think he was getting played out of position a fair bit, and he didn't sort of fit into the new system that um the manager was playing. So the fact that it happened out of nowhere was still a complete shock to me. Like, I hadn't heard anything about it. Well, Luke Edwards might have gave something earlier on the window, but it, this was yeah. a complete shock to me. And I think it, he's an absolutely fantastic sign, and it really shows where Newcastle sort of stand these days with, um, you know, post-takeover. post, post takeover. Yeah. Ez, what do you think? Are we getting carried away because we've broken our transfer record? I mean, he is only 22, and he has only been only been at Real Sociedad, you know, in the Spanish league. I mean, are we just, you know, getting carried away on the euphoria of this, you know, transfer breaking thing, or have we actually got ourselves a bit of a gem? And in a couple of years' time, people will be going, oh, we "Missed a trick there, didn't we?" Honestly, if I knew the answer to that, but I, yeah, I, I, he's the thing is right. He's not <laughs> Erling Haaland, right? In many in many respects, but certainly yeah. in terms of reputation and goal scoring prowess, right? Erling Haaland's the same age, and uh, we, you just knew he was going to come here and absolutely smash it. And he, he early signs are showing that he, he is. Yeah. But um, I can't say the same about Isak. I'm very excited about him, but my concern is that we're going to put like uh, well, given that Wilson's going to be out a lot, it's going to be a lot of pressure on his his shoulders. Uh, he's inexperienced. He doesn't know the league. Um, he's perhaps not as physical um, a player. Um, and so in games like the game we had against like Wolves just there, I don't know how he would have performed. I think he's gonna it's going to take time. And I guess I'm just trying to uh, temper expectations a little yeah. bit. Because yeah. as a fan base, we're like, right, we've broken our record. He's going to be, you know, he's going to score these goals. I don't know. If he gets more than... Six or seven goals this season. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be ha I'd be happy. Uh, I'd also be quite surprised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you're an absolute, you know, La Liga aficionado, you're not. I, I mean, I knew very, very little about him. Uh, my son knew a lot about him, and he got very excited about it when it happened. So I thought, hmm, there's got to be something there. And then obviously, I just saw the YouTube clips, which is nothing like seeing someone. In. So it is a bit. It is a bit jolly. It is a bit of a. Is it a gamble? Would you say? I mean, you know, is 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 this the sort of thing that now is sixty million? Is this going to sort of thing that's going to you know when Eddie's put his name to this and it's going to be a bit of a millstone around his neck if he turns out to be a bit of a, a dud? Mm, I mean, I suppose you could say it's a sort of calculated gamble based off you know other other the price of the market these days, like sixty million. I mean. I saw a thing actually it's quite funny on um on Twitter of Paul Merson going 50 million for De Bruyne seven years ago. Like wow, Yeah, what yeah, I saw that. Doing? Yeah. I was watching it before. And you're just now like it's just like inflation. Like that that's the sort of 
you know, 60 million is an awful. I mean, Man United have just paid borderline 100 million for Anthony. Um, yeah. I mean, don't know how that's going to go. That could also be a very, very big gamble. But no, I think it, when, you, when you've got the money we do and you want it to progress the way we want to, you know, Europa League, hopefully the next couple of seasons, possibly Champions League, you've got to make these these big signings. And, you know, it could you could say it was reactionary to Wilson's injury, which I think Howe sort of hinted on. Um, but, I mean, it was inevitable. In the next three years, we we're going to have to get a, another number nine. And I don't think we've really had a proper number nine who stayed fit, like, since realistically CCO Ball. Like, they, yeah. I was looking at our past records and strikers who've scored goals. And I don't think we've had a striker since it was either Loic Remy or or maybe CC, who, who scored over 13 in one season. So I've not missed that number nine. Yeah, for like Dwight Gale, yeah. So many years. Well, yeah, in the, in the championship. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's a spot inevitably that we need to fill. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully Isaac can do a good job in that. Yeah, absolutely. I think also the thing about De Bruyne was on the back of um, one of the, I think it was the mirror as well, where City go for Chelsea flop, I think it said. So again, so what do they know really? So, and while we're talking about people coming in, uh as what do you think we need to do in the next couple of days? And if anything, what positions do you think we need to fill? Well, it's interesting because we've barely seen any of Javier Manquillo. Um, barely seen him in pre-season. Um, he seemed to have slipped to third choice right back. Um, and so Eddie House today in his press conference said he's got Manquillo. He doesn't want to buy another right back. I personally would look at maybe a loan deal for a, better backup option just because we haven't seen Mankio and that's what concerns me and he chose not to bring him on in, tra- in the Tranmere game mm. which also concerns me like why risk Trippier when you've got another right back on the bench yeah so I, I would personally go for right back but apparently the club are not going to do that um, and I also go for a cent- central midfielder I did think about this and I thought we've already got six central midfielders but one's out quite long term ish with Shelby. Um, and then that leaves you with five to fill three positions. So we probably, if we're going to play four, three, three, we probably need about seven or eight midfielders, really. Yeah. Know, to, to cover it all. Yeah. So we probably need another midfielder. Um, and then if I'm being really greedy, I'd want um, someone to take Al Miron's place um, or, or at least challenge Al Miron uh, on kind of the right wing um, to a forward position. Right. Yeah. And that all sounds. More than reasonable to me, Joe. What do you think? Where where do we need to where do we need to strengthen, if at all? I think again, adding on to the sort of sense of squad depth, we really, really do need a central defensive midfielder. Um, not only a Grant Bruno, sort of more of a free roaming attacking central mid role to get him mm. up the pitch because he's shown you know his quality. I think it was against Norwich last season when he got up, scored a couple of goals. Um. Yeah, and obviously the injuries. I, I still I say this every podcast, and I think I will until he goes. Longstaff just isn't good enough in my eyes. Like he really isn't. I get it, local lad, effort, all that. But in terms of his genuine skill base, he's, he's not good enough to, to progress Newcastle consistently in the top ten. Yeah. Um, so I think a central midfielder, preferably a central defensive midfielder, would be my sort of go-to target. And again, yeah, right, right wing. Someone with a really, really good quality there. Um, yeah. so we've got Almiron and Fraser. Again, Fraser's quite injury prone. Almiron has shown in pre season he picked up some form, but it's about staying consistent at a high level. And I'm, I'm not sure he is the player for that as much as I like him because I really, really do like um, Mickey. So, yeah, yeah, CDM in a right winger, I'd probably go for on the right back situation. Mankiewicz is a weird one. I don't know anything about that, why he's been sort of left out. Yeah. Um, if he was fit, I mean, he, he's. He, He's played decent in spells for, you know, he'd probably do a good job at backup right back. But again, because we haven't seen him in so long, that is quite a concern. So a loan deal there wouldn't wouldn't be um, too bad. Yeah. Longstaff's a funny one, isn't he? Because he seems to divide people. I know people just on social media, some like yourself, Joe, are just like, no, well, you know, local lad and all that. But, you know, he's just not up to it. And some people are like, no, he's just, you know, he's the future. He is... What we, you know, got to look after this lad. Him and Anderson, you know, in a couple of years are going to be, you know, number one choices. So, I mean, as do you think we're going to actually buy anybody now? Is is that is that possible in two days, or is it just going to be low knees? And that brings itself a whole different raft of problems, doesn't it? 
I, I still think, I said this on the last pod, I think we'll sign James Madison. Um, I think there's loads of smoke, some, smoke and mirrors here. You know, oh, you know, it's just going to be loans. How many times have we heard that? It's just going to be loans and, and then we go yeah. and spend 60 million. I think um, these guys are opportunists. If there's, if there's an opportunity to exploit the market, they will at whatever price. Yeah. So given that there's only two days left, now's the time for exploitation. And now's where I think um, the surprises will come in. And I think one of those surprises is going to be Madison. Uh, but no, they're, they're saying it's going to be loans. Um, I just think, what's the point in a loan? I think Eddie has already said as well, like I only want loans where there's an obligation to buy, like the Matty Target deal, because otherwise I'm yeah. just making someone else's uh, you know, player better and then they're just going to go back. So um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about loans unless it's a, a really exceptional player. Um, I'd rather we just, I'd rather we buy them or just don't buy anyone. Yeah, I mean, there's been there was talk about Conor Gallagher, uh, who obviously got sent off the other day for Chelsea, uh, and Pulis, who now, I'm, as far as I understand, they've they've both been told they're going to stay. So uh, I was quite keen on Gallagher until um, Bruno schooled him playing for Palace last year at, at St James's. Um, is he someone that either you would fancy if if we could get someone get him? I think Gallagher's a great great player. I, I really do rate him. I mean, he's shown when he went on loan to Palace how good he is. Um, he's probably more of a rotation and sort of a rotator player for Chelsea. Mm. But then again, I think they'd only let him go on loan if they were to bring in another central midfielder of some sort, which I'm not, I haven't kept up with Chelsea transfers today. I don't know if there's anything else, but as far as I know, there's no one coming in. No, as um, far as I know, there's been no one coming for them yeah. today. I mean, it could have changed, couldn't it, in the last five minutes, but... Yeah, you never know. But yeah, Gallagher, he's a great player. He's versatile. He can drift. He can car- He's a ball carrier, which is what I really like about him. His ball retention is really good in terms of getting the ball up the pitch. Um, he can play on the right wing. He can drift there. Um, he provides more of an attacking threat, which is clearly something we'll have. Obviously, ASM is getting sort of marked out by teams, just like if uh, on this comment here, why John John Gandhi's put in, and it would be good to have someone sort of at the other side of the pitch to um, to kind of balance that out. But yeah, I think I, it, alone with an option to buy, I think Palace apparently bidded twenty seven million for him outright, which Chelsea, in my opinion, would be stupid to accept. But yeah, I'd love to see him. Uh, mm. Yeah. I mean, do I mean, like I say, I, Eddie, like you said, has said that's it. I mean, you know, we're not going to probably buy anybody, but yeah, I mean, he's very good. He's, he's getting good at the dark arts, isn't he, Eddie? He likes to sort of like go, what's that? And then sort of like, you know, deflect away from. I mean, I don't think they will buy anybody else. I think uh, I thought Isaac was, you know, all our dosh went on Isaac, even though I would love Madison to come. I don't, I don't think that's going to, that's going to happen. Have you got any predictions for tomorrow night before we go? Any thoughts on um, us against the Scousers? I think it really depends on if certain people are fit and a certain someone has the, the work permit arrived. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, it's, it's it's not an amazing time to play Liverpool after a 9-0 victory for them. Um, oh, wait, we don't have a good record there. But I'll be I'll be optimistic and say um, a two two draw. Two two draw. Say it in a couple of players. And as what do you think? I can't, Joel. I can't. I can't. Man. I can't be as optimistic <laughs> as you, man. Um, uh, I've seen too many. I've seen too many defeats. Uh, I, I do. I do think, however, we will. It will be a tight game. We'll be two one down in the closing stages. We're really going to push them. And then they'll probably get a sucker punch third goal and make it 3-1. But I don't think it will harm our confidence. I think we'll play with the same system, same intensity. We'll, we'll really kind of go there with no fear. So I don't think it will be a result that will kind of affect us for the, for the next game. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if Isaac doesn't play, his first game will be against Palace, won't it? So a home debut wouldn't wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, would it? So, And throwing him against Liverpool would be, would be tough. Um, well... I think we've just about covered everything for this evening. Thank you very much, Joel and Ez, for joining us and everyone at home. So thanks very much. And how are the lads? No worries. Have a good one.